In the last video, we looked at all the Achaean heroes. So if you missed that, go check it out. In this video, we're going to be looking at all the Trojan heroes and their unique mechanics. Let's start off with Hector, Prince of Troy. Hector's first mechanic is called the Ashwan League. Hector looks to build defensive and military alliances. The more regions controlled by Hector's allies, not Hector himself, the more boons will be given to Hector and his army. These boons will include a massive increase to campaign movement, reduced recruitment cost, and reduced troop upkeep. You will be rewarded for building alliances and helping them keep their land. You will even be given occasional gifts if you aid your allies. Hector's next mechanic is called Priam's Heir. This is shared with Paris. This mechanic is a race to earn Priam's favour and become King of Troy. You will gain benevolence through a set of changing criteria that you have to meet. Completing these tasks or giving a certain amount of resources to Troy before Paris will grant you benevolence. Once you reach max benevolence, you will become King of Troy and gain all lands that Troy and your brother has. If you like playing politically with a focus on building defensive allies, maintaining a smaller amount of settlements but building them up to be the strongest they can be and letting your enemies try their luck against your walls, then Hector is for you. His unique mechanic and elite troops all play into a diplomatic and defensive playstyle. Next, let's talk about Paris, Prince of Troy. As we just talked about, Paris also has Priam's heir, and will act in the same way as Hector. If you want to be that kind of brother, there are a few sneaky ways to reduce the benevolence of your brother. Paris's other mechanic is called Helen, my love. Helen is represented as a property on the campaign map and is bound to a settlement. She can be moved around via the Helen My Love panel and depending on what buildings are in the settlement will give access to different celebration options. Paris and Helen's moves are intertwined. Helen's mood will change depending on different factors like how long she's been apart from Paris or if she gets captured. Her mood directly affects the region she's in in positive and negative ways. Paris's mood will directly affect his army gaining boosts in morale and campaign movement among other things. Paris can be for the more methodical player, planning out short campaigns with a specific goal in mind. Use Helen and Paris's mood to your advantage to build your population quickly and keep your people happy. Aeneas, Lord of Dardinia, cousin to Hector and Paris. He is able to participate in divine omens. Occasionally he can accept missions to earn the gods' favour. This will cost you resources to perform the omen. These missions can range from raid or capture a certain region, eliminate a character, make peace with a warring faction or even declare war. The harder the mission, the more favour you will acquire. Styxian Voices is the ability to talk to dead heroes. This is an ability that the cults don't like and will lower your favour with the gods. There are many different heroes you can commune with, including any dead hero within the game, and some special characters that are called Heroes of Old. Each dead hero can give you one of three buffs that will last for several turns. If you want to go a little deeper into the gods mechanic and want a more random, unpredictable playthrough, then Aeneas may be the hero for you. Sarpedon, King of Lycia, has access to trade missions. He cares about having influence in other factions' regions. You are the only one that can gain influence through trade. For every 20 units of resources traded, you will gain one influence within that faction. Once you've gained enough influence, a few options will become available to you. You can gain exotic goods from deposits within that region, you can break a barter agreement that faction has with another faction, or you can steal a barter agreement, replacing it like for like. These actions all require gold which is expensive and slow to amass, so choose your time to use influence wisely. Sarpedon has access to precious resources. These are made up of three unique pooled resources only visible to him. These resources are Celestial Iron, White Granite and Minoan Relics. Each of these resources appear as a deposit in a region on the campaign map. To gain access to these resources, Sarpedon needs to occupy that region, then the resource is gathered one unit per turn. Once enough resources have been mined, they can be spent to activate different effect bundles. The price to activate these bundles will scale depending on the number of regions you control. Iron will give enhancement to your troops in combat, granite will aid you in construction of your buildings, and Minoan relics will increase your influence and favour from priestesses' rituals. 
If you love trading and waging a different type of war, then Sarpedon may be the hero for you. That's a quick rundown of all the heroes in the game and their unique mechanics. Have fun and see how you can make them work for you.